Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt, and this is the best-selling subcompact SUV in America, and it has been for a number of years. But for this year, it's brand new, and it has made some big leaps. And today, we've finished our week with the new Crosstrek, so we're hitting the highlights, the best and the rest, starting with the rest. <laughs> Now the first thing that we're going to talk about is the trunk space. Now it's not all bad, there's some pretty interesting stuff going on. Objectively, it's a pretty decent size, and you get these little plastic mountains cut out into your rear bumper guard. You have cup holders for some reason, and you also have matching interior plastics with the texture that you get on things like your wheel cladding, which is just strange. And of course, if you option the cargo protection or the cargo liner thing, it's made to look like a riverbed because of course it's a Subaru. But the reason that I have it on this side of the video, on the negative side of the video, is because, well, it's just, it's just a bit smaller than the rest of the competition. It seems like the Corolla Cross felt bigger. The HRV is certainly bigger, so it's still practical. It's still a decent cargo area, but it is just smaller. But it definitely has the most personality, that's for sure, especially if you like rivers. And the second thing, speaking of engines, you do get two choices, neither of which have a turbo, neither of which is a hybrid. Here, we have the base engine, which is a two liter, naturally aspirated boxer four cylinder. 152 horsepower, 145 pound-feet of torque. The bigger engine is a 2.5 liter, so half a liter bigger than this, but still, NA, Boxer 4, 30 more horsepower, 182, and 178 pound-feet of torque. EPA will say, in this engine, in the base engine, you're good for 29 mpg combined. I have been getting, like, 33 to mid-30s, and it's probably about 60% highway, 40% city, but still, that's kind of what I would consider combined driving, so I think it's pretty good. The issue that I have here is just that the engine is a bit wheezy and kind of sounds coarse, and it's pretty slow. And ultimately, I'm just a little bit surprised that there's not a hybrid, and that's because the last generation car we saw with a plug-in hybrid, which was good for 17 miles of fully electric range. That would also add more power and make this thing faster. And yeah, I'm just kind of surprised not to see a hybrid or plug-in. Maybe they'll bring it later in the life cycle, though. And the next piece is interior quality. And I know no one's expecting Mercedes-level interior in their Subaru, and that's fine. And objectively, it's not that bad, but it is just it's kind of chintzy, you know? And I do know that some of these things would be addressed in the higher trim packages, but here we have just a smattering of blacks and grays and dark tones. There's different feeling plastics with different degrees of scratchiness. Your steering wheel, for instance, is like a soft touch plastic that I've never seen on a steering wheel before and wouldn't mind never seeing again. And of course, you've got cloth seats, which I don't really mind. They heat up nice with the heated seat and they heat up pretty quickly. But then you've got faux carbon fiber, which isn't fooling anyone. So it's not a super nice or luxurious cabin, but it really shouldn't be for the price point. But the reason that it ends up here on the negative side of the video is just because a lot of the other competitors, Honda, Mazda, they bring much nicer interiors than what you get here. And the last thing is a total nitpick, but it sent me up a wall this week. And it's the fact that the turn signal says on the window sticker, it has the thing where you press it half down and you get the three blinks to change lanes but I couldn't get it to work all week this week. Maybe it's just deep in a settings menu that I missed, but I couldn't get it to work and it drove me crazy on my trip from Chicago and then to the lake and back. But with all that stuff out of the way, let's talk about all the great parts of this Crosstrek. The first and everyone's favorite thing about a Subaru is the fact that you get all-wheel drive, as standard, across the board. All the Crosstreks, all-wheel drive which has resulted in the car feeling really sure-footed all week through wet and dry conditions. You've also got active torque vectoring, so this thing will turn pretty well. And Subaru's all-wheel drive system is legendary, and you love to see it standard here, especially considering the price. And at the end of the day, pretty much all the other competitors come standard as front-wheel drive, and then you have to spend more money to get all-wheel drive. So it's great to see you get symmetrical all-wheel drive from Subaru as standard. And the second thing has to do with safety. Another thing that's now coming standard on all cross treks across the board is Subaru's updated EyeSight system, which is why it's on the good side of the video. The system is pretty good objectively. It does have a tendency to hug the right hand side of the lane or the right lane, uh, lane line, excuse me. So overtaking things like semis is a little bit stressful, but other than that, it is genuinely pretty good. It's not gonna change lanes for you, but at this price point, I don't expect it to. And I really do like the fact that it comes standard now across all trims, it's pretty good. And then there's the rear seats, which actually aren't too bad. This isn't going to be segment leading and HRV is gonna have a bigger back seat, um, but you do have a bigger back seat here than in something like a Mazda CX-30. 
The cloth is reasonably comfortable. You do get dual charging options, USB-A and USB-C, and they're for whatever reason labeled with the charging output, three amps versus 2.4. You've got a single map pocket over here. You don't get vents, bummer, would have loved those. But you do get cup holders and the headroom's pretty decent. And me at 6'1", I've got about two or three inches of knee room in front of me. So not bad, not great, but not bad. And this next piece is something I was shocked to see, and we're gonna talk about the towing capacity. Now, as standard on a Crosstrek, with the little engine here that we have, no transmission cooler, you still get as standard 1,500 pounds of towing, which is a huge deal, because as you'll see in our HRV comparison video, the HRV isn't rated to tow anything. You have to go up to the CRV to tow something, and that upgraded CRV, which is the segment above this, is rated at 1,500 pounds of towing, so the same that you get as standard here. But wait, there's more insanely more and I again I had to check like seven different times because I just couldn't believe what I was reading if you upgrade to the wilderness or a Subaru Crosstrek with the 2.5 liter engine and a transmission cooler you can get 3,500 pounds of towing again I had to double check this because it doesn't make sense to me that you can tow that much with under 200 pound feet of torque and under 200 horsepower but apparently you can pretty wild and then there's the off-roadiness, and this is obviously the one to get if you plan to leave the pavement at all. From the jump, you get the legendary all-wheel drive system that we talked about before. And even this premium trim gets X mode for more aggressive off-road traction management. You've got more ground clearance than just about anyone else, and if that wasn't enough, there's a wilderness trim on top of it, which offers over a half inch lift, better tires, and a bunch of other stuff. Plus you have a roof rack up here so you can put a tent. Make sure you check out our feature tour for the static and dynamic weight limits. And the other side of that coin is the on-roadiness, and on the pavement it's pretty decent too. Sure, the engine is fairly gutless and doesn't sound particularly good, but that's kind of par for the course in this segment anyway. But there's enough power, at least to get on the highway. The CVT isn't offensive in my experience. It's pretty smooth. The steering is actually pretty decent, although I wish this was a different texture and material. And it's the same dual pinion steering system that you get in things like the WRX. So the front end is actually pretty aggressive and it does feel pretty agile and ready to move. The damping is nice and soft and cushy. It is very much on the side of that like old luxury boat style where you get a big waft and I don't know, personally I kind of like that as opposed to the more modern stiffer suspensions, but the visibility is great out the front and the sides and it's fairly efficient. At a full tank, it's showing 500 miles of range. And that's because without a turbo or a hybrid, this thing is super efficient. The EPA rates this two liter engine at about 29 MPG combined, but I've been getting closer to the mid 33s all week. And that's probably about 60% highway, but still. I would still love to see a hybrid here so we could have like a, a macho off-roader Prius competitor. And it also is a little bit disappointing that last generation you can get a PHEV of this, but maybe they're adding that later in the life cycle. So maybe we'll get one soon. And then in terms of looks, I'm kind of in the middle on how I feel about the styling. It doesn't look quite as good as a CX-30, but it looks better than an HRV and a Corolla Cross. I do like the new grille with its Salvador Dali mustache. And then the whole car is wrapped in black plastic cladding. And that's got a diamond texture on it. And you'll remember the WRX had hexagons for its texture. So it's a little bit weird. On the WRX, they were selling it as smoothing aerodynamics. But what are they selling it as here on the Crosstrek with under 200 horsepower? And then speaking of that, you've also got weirdly aggressive aero in the wheel arches and on the rear. But I guess it looks kind of cool. And also, you've got a gray side mirror for some reason. And overall, I do like this blue paint, especially on the rear tailgate where it kind of blends into the logo. And one of the big places they made improvements for this year is in the tech suite, and it shows. I've got the upgraded massive 11.6 center infotainment screen. And as we know, bigger screen means better screen. So it doesn't matter that it doesn't have native navigation here and that you have to go into the screen to turn on auto climate control or that the graphics still look like a PS2. The screen is big, so all is forgiven. <laughs> no, but to be honest, it's actually fairly nice. You do get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto here, and you do get wired across some other trims. Same thing with the wireless charger. And you get a TFT screen in your cluster here where the car's brake lights light up when you hit the brake pedal. So that was a little bit cheeky. I do have some issues with the lagginess of the screen, but overall, I like the new screen. The tech is pretty good, and what you get as standard and what you can option here is, is pretty competitive, so I'm not, I'm not bothered by it. And finally, the price here is pretty good too. Again, make sure to watch our HRV versus Crosstrek video that's on the channel now. The HRV is a little bit cheaper, but doesn't come with all-wheel drive. So by the time that you add all-wheel drive, the HRV is gonna be more expensive in pretty much every similar trim which is kind of what I was alluding to earlier. 
as tested, this car is about 29,700 bucks. And I really do feel like at the under 30 grand mark, you're getting a lot of car here. Which seems like a good time for the final thoughts. But before we get into the final thoughts, here's just a couple things that I noticed during the week that didn't really, they weren't big enough to make it into a final, I guess, category. One is we talked about the kind of dynamic nature of the riverbed on the cargo liner, as well as the mountain details on your lid. We also talked about the texture matching here and here. But what we didn't talk about is the fact that you get cup holders in your trunk, which is weird. I mean, I guess it makes sense if you're like tailgating or if you've set up camp and you need a place to put, you know, a big water bottle or whatever. It's kind of nice, but just kind of strange. Another weird thing is in your cup holders here. You've got like removable cup holder risers, which is kind of nice if you spill coffee or soda on them, you can take them out and then wash them down so they're not all sticky. But look, they've also got the same mountain detail that we had on the trunk. And that mountain detail, that continues back here as well. This isn't the wilderness, this is just a normal cross track, but you get this detail everywhere, which is kind of cool. And this is a smaller nitpick, just like the annoying turn signal is, but this is wireless Apple CarPlay, which is fantastic, I love to have it here, but it's vertically oriented, so these three main app buttons, they're down here, and they're just like really small, and the ride here is kind of bouncy, so actually selecting one of these things, like if you're going between Spotify and navigation, it's really difficult to actually hit these correctly. So what I found myself having to do is grab the bottom of the screen here to anchor my hand, and then use my thumb to press these buttons. Small thing, but definitely noticed it this week. So that is the best and the rest of the Subaru Crosstrek. And now having spent a week with it, I kind of get the hype. It just does pretty much everything pretty well. And it does it for like the least amount of money. And if you plan to leave the pavement at all, it's the de facto obvious choice. So thank you to Subaru. Big fan of your little Crosstrek. Thank you to you for watching. And we'll see you in the next one. Make sure you check out our feature tour coming soon.